I do want to start with that Supreme Court ruling uh, pertaining to, to Puerto Rico. And uh, we actually have a clip to show you here going into some of the details. Uh, the lone dissenting opinion was Sonia Sotomayor or Sotomayor. Uh, her, her family, I believe, is from Puerto Rico. Her parents are from Puerto Rico. Um, and there, there was some interesting opining from Gorsuch as well, who, who sort of an unpredictable, um, uh, uh, opinion from, from Gorsuch here, where he actually kind of, he's an originalist. So he, he took the originalist position and kind of disagreed with the logic that was used to come to the finding. Um, but, uh, in, in essence here, the Supreme court denying Puerto Ricans access to, um, to things like social security, um, and other entitlements, despite them being part of the United States. So we have a clip here going into these details. This is Juan Gonzalez on, uh, on, uh, democracy now. Juan's a journalist. He teaches journalism at Rutgers, and he's a co-host on uh, on Democracy Now. So he went into some of these details. He's been following this case quite closely. We'll watch this come back and discuss. Once again, uh, Judge Sotomayor, who was not only born in Puerto Rico, but people forget she did her, her research in college, both at Princeton and at Yale, in the relationship between Puerto Rico and the United States. So this is a topic she has studied for many years. Once again, she finds herself as a dissenting voice in the Supreme Court. But to me, I think the far more significant development in this case, and one that most of the media coverage in the last few days has overlooked, was that there was a separate concurring opinion issued by one of the court's most conservative justices, Niels Gorsuch. Uh, his 10-page uh, opinion, and I urge people to read it, is one of the clearest and most eloquent statements exposing U.S. colonialism that's ever been issued by a Supreme Court justice, at least in my lifetime. And it could be the signal to, of beginning of a long overdue change in the court on this issue. But to understand the importance of what Gorsuch says in his opinion, and I want to quote some of it in a, in a minute or so, but is we need to understand the bigger picture. We now have had four Supreme Court decisions in less than six years, all of them having to do with Puerto Rico's relationship to the United States. And back in 2016, we had the Sanchez Valle case, which was an issue of whether Puerto Rico had separate sovereignty to be able to try people. The court said no. Then we had uh, a few weeks later the Franklin tax free trust case on whether Puerto Rico could declare its own bankruptcy because it had no bankruptcy protection uh, uh, under U.S. law. The court said no. Uh, then in 2020, we had the Aurelius case, which was a challenge to the legitimacy of the appointments of the oversight board uh, that the that Congress had established over Puerto Rico. Uh, Puerto Rico was arguing this was a federal imposition. I mean, I mean some of the case of uh, the litigants were arguing this was a federally imposed uh, uh, illegal appointments board. The United States was arguing, no, this was a Puerto Rico officers that were appointed by the United States. The court once again uh, sided against Puerto Rico. And now we have the Vallejo Madero case, where a man who'd been receiving SSI benefits for years in this country uh, and paying taxes in this country moves to Puerto Rico. And then uh, years later, the government finds out that he still was collecting SSI then and says he's not eligible for those benefits and that he had to pay back $28,000. That was the basis of this latest case. All of these cases take for granted the power of Congress to do whatever it wants when it comes to Puerto Rico and governed by the territorial clause of the Constitution, as the court interpreted more than 100 years ago in a series of cases known as the insular cases. And this is the heart of the question here, the insular cases. There were cases like Downs versus Bidwell, DeLima versus Bidwell, Dorr versus United States, Gonzalez versus Williams, Balzac versus Puerto Rico, all in the early decades of the 20th century. Let's be clear, the insular cases have been for a century the legal underpinnings of American colonialism. They provide legal justification for the United States to hold other nationalities and territory under its control. So what does Gorsuch, who is one of the most conservative justices, say about this? Uh, uh, and his opinion is astonishing in that it calls to completely overthrow the insular cases. Let me quote to you some of what he says. He starts out in his opinion saying, a century ago in the insular cases, this court held that the federal government could rule Puerto Rico and other territories largely without regard to the Constitution. 
It is past time to acknowledge the gravity of this error and admit what we know to be true. The insular cases have no foundation in the Constitution and rest instead on racial stereotypes. They deserve no place in our law. Now, justices don't talk to, uh, this clearly uh, very often. He goes on to say uh, that, uh, that uh, in the Downs case, the two main justices there, Brown and, and White, uh, uh, th their opinions at bottom both rested on a view about the nation's right to acquire and exploit, quote, an unknown island peopled with an uncivilized race for commercial and strategic reasons, a right that could not be practically exercised if the result would be to endow full constitutional protection on those absolutely unfit to receive them. Uh, and it was Justice White who developed this idea of incorporated and unincorporated territories, that some territories were never meant to be part of the United States, and this included Puerto Rico and the Philippines and, and some of the other islands that were acquired back in the Spanish-American War. So Gorsuch goes on to say, in his opinion, the flaws in the insular cases are as fundamental as they are shameful. Nothing in the Constitution speaks of incorporated and unincorporated territories. Nothing in it extends to the latter, only certainly supposedly fundamental constitutional guarantees. And he goes on to say that the insular cases are a product of a period of ugly racial stereotypes and the theories of social Darwinists, but they have no home in our Constitution or its original understanding. Now, understand that Gorsuch, as an originalist, <laughs> looks at the Constitution and says all of this justification for colonialism did not exist in the original Constitution. It was made up afterwards, and it needs to be uh, overthrown. Uh, and uh, uh, he goes on to say, quote, under this court's cases, we are asked to believe that the right to a trial by jury remains insufficiently fundamental to apply to some 3 million U.S. citizens in, quote, unincorporated Puerto Rico. At the same time, the full panoply of constitutional rights apparently applies on the Palmyra Atoll, an uninhabited patch of land in the Pacific Ocean, because it represents our nation's only remaining incorporated territory. It, it's a, it is an, an implausible and embarrassing state of affairs. And he says that the only reason he voted in the majority in this case was that no one asked him to overthrow the insular cases, not even the litigants on the other side. And this, but then he, he ends his opinion by saying, but the time has come to recognize that the insular cases rest on a rotten foundation. And I hope the day comes soon when the court squarely overrules them. We should follow Justice Harlan and settle this question right. Our fellow Americans in Puerto Rico deserve no less. Now, Justice Sotomayor, in her opinion, her dissent uh, uh, also backs Gorsuch. So we now have two justices who have clearly said the insular cases, the foundation of American colonialism, need to be overthrown. And I think that is a major, major step in the court. And hopefully some of the other originalists, because one of the problems with Puerto Rico is that many of the liberal justices, Justice Breyer, uh, Justice uh, Ginsburg, when she was alive, Justice Kagan, have been terrible on this issue. They have not really dared to challenge the insular cases. So it may, it may necessitate a, an, a, an, a, an unholy alliance of originalist conservative justices and more progressive uh, justices uh, to begin to finally end the legal basis for American colonialism. But I think this is a definitely a step forward, and Justice Gorsuch's opinion needs to be studied more carefully. And Juan, how does that relate to what's happening today on Capitol Hill? Um, the well, lobbying the, the day for issue, the Puerto, right, yeah. Puerto Rican Self Determination. Well, Act. the big issue is that there are more and more elected officials and uh, Puerto Rican communities in both the island and the United States that are calling for the passage of this Self Determination Act. There's going to be a rally at 5 p.m. Uh, this evening in Lafayette Square, uh, and uh, th uh, there's intense lobbying going on uh, to try to get the bill introduced by Lydia, uh, by Nidia Velasquez uh, to pass the House uh, and the Senate, because Bob Menendez in the Senate is, is also co-sponsoring it, to basically allow uh, Puerto Rico to convene a constitutional convention uh, to decide its relationship, what it should be its relationship to Puerto Rico. Uh, and so it is, it, uh, that would be definitely a step forward, getting Congress to say, okay, 
we're, we're not going to continue to dictate what our relationship with Puerto Rico is. Because understand, the imposition of the control board uh, in 2016 uh, ended any claim that the United States had given to the world for the last six, uh, 60 years, 70 years, that Puerto Rico had self-government. Puerto Rico is now ruled by a U.S.-appointed control board to all in, in, uh, effectively. Uh, and uh, so it's back to the classic colonial uh, uh, stage. So the issue of how is that going to end? What's going to happen when the, when the control board is lifted, finally? What will be the relationship between Puerto Rico and the United States still needs to be resolved. And this is uh, the Puerto Rico Self-Determination Act is definitely a step in that direction. Absolutely incredible to me, you guys, that... <clears throat> The legal underpinning of this stuff was essentially, oh, no, those people, they're not worthy of constitutional rights. We have to determine who is and is not worthy of constitutional rights. It's outright racism. It's outright colonialism. It's incredible that that is still such a, like, winning legal argument today, you guys. Um, and and Gorsuch here, because of his sort of staunch originalism, uh, is poking holes in some of the evolution of that precedent and, the, and, and those those findings by the Supreme Court. Right. Um, and, and Sotomayor, uh, obviously dissenting here, I think, correctly. Um, and it's a shame that that no other justices did. Um, this Supreme Court is obviously awful. Like it's obviously even the the quote unquote liberals on this court are are not all that keen to challenge corporate power or to uh, you know back up regulations or anything of the sort. Um, not not too keen to stand with workers. Those kinds of things, right? Um, so I just I thought it was fascinating that Gorsuch of all justices, like the guy considered perhaps the furthest right of all of them was the one that that uh, found an originalist argument here that sort of now, again, he didn't actually find that way. He still he, he found against Puerto Rico um, and on the side of colonialism. But he sort of said, like, I don't like the president, but I'm going to stand with the president in a weird way. Right. Um Anyhow, um, shame on the Supreme Court there. Uh, good reporting from Juan Gonzalez going into the details, and I wanted to make sure not to gloss over that one. I think that's a very important finding. The the um, attitude towards you know Puerto Rico should be it should be independent, you guys, or a state like one of the two. Um, there's 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 that we've put them in this kind of in between is outrageous, and and it's it's just modern colonialism. I know I keep saying that word, but that's like what else, how else do you describe that, right? Um, so anyway, we'll we'll keep up on those kinds of stories and and you know the findings of this this court. Um, just just fascinating bedfellows there between perhaps the 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 progressives supporting Puerto Rico and Gorsuch, who's a constitutional originalist uh, and about as far right as one can get. Um, anyhow.